my pleasure to welcome you this morning, both those watching from home as well as our very small group gathered here. I'm Jane Stonecipher, Executive Director of the Arboretum Foundation. We serve as the programming and support partner for the Seattle Japanese Garden, working with Seattle Parks and Recreation. 2020 marks the 60th anniversary season for the garden. In Japan, this is known as the Kanreke celebration and is marked by the color red and a sense of renewal. Our garden is a symbol of many years of partnership and collaboration between our Japanese neighbors and the people of Seattle. In the 1950s, the Tokyo Metropolitan Parks Department offered design assistance and oversight for the garden, which was one of the first major garden projects outside of Japan after the war. In fact, 60 years ago today, on October 5, 1960, there was an imperial visit to the garden by the now emeritus emperor and empress. Like today, there were trees planted to mark this visit. Looking through the decades, the garden has worked closely with the Office of the Consul General of Japan in Seattle. Today, we're one honored to welcome Consul General and Mrs. Inigaki, who came to Seattle in August. Thank you for joining us today, as well as Mr. Tojo from the consulate. Volunteers have long been the lifeblood of the Arboretum and the Seattle Japanese Garden. This morning, we'll hear from several volunteers about the Green Legacy Hiroshima Project, the latest partnership between Japan and the city of Seattle, as we work for greater mutual understanding between our countries. We're pleased to have Seattle Park Superintendent Aguirre and Mayor Jenny Durkin with us this morning. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mayor Durkin. Thank you so much for that introduction and thank you to folks who are here today and anyone watching from home. Uh, during these challenging times in 2020, it is particularly important to remember those signs of hope and the deep friendships that we have. And today, marking the 60th anniversary of the Seattle Japanese Garden is one of those rare things we're able to do in 2020. Planting this tree itself is a sign of hope, but it also reflects how our country and our city and our region have overcome hardship before and have joined hands with people to make it a better world. So I'm very honored to be here today, to be really able to be here with the Consul General and his wife, to be here with the people and the volunteers who make this place so special, and for the Arboretum too, is just a special place in Seattle. We know that celebrating these long-standing partnerships is critical and that the Arboretum would not be what it is today were it not just for the commitment of our Seattle Parks and Recreation and Jesus thank you for being here but the amazing support from people throughout Seattle from the Japanese community and also from the Arboretum Society. As mayor of a global city I really want to say thank you Consul General and welcome. We're sorry you moved to Seattle in August of 2020 but we hope you find it well and we promise that it will get better. Um, I really want to thank the Arboretum Foundation again. The work you guys do is so fantastic in Seattle Parks and Recreation. We know that there's been so many milestones since these first trees were planted um, and in our 63 years of being a sister city with Kobe. We planted trees in 1960. I'm probably one of the few people at this celebration that was actually alive then. Um, right here in the Arboretum, as well as in the Kobe Bell at Seattle Center in 1964, and the Kobe Terrace Park in 1976. And, of course, there's the Seattle Forest, which is the section of the Arboretum that Kobe helped us open in 1975. Over the years, the Seattle delegation has plant, planted several trees in Kobe as well to mark the mutual friendship of our two cities and our two nations and to plant trees which will last through generations as we know our friendship will as well. These, tr these, these trees really symbolize that friendship, our commitment to nourishing peace, and friendship over other divisions and fears and conflicts. And of course, our commitment to mutual understanding and appreciate our diversity and differences. The Japanese community is such an important part of the city of Seattle and has contributed so much to who we are as a city and a region. 
and it took time for us to make peace ourselves with even the people who were residents and citizens of Seattle, but also with the great country of Japan. And I want to thank you again, Consul General, for your, your, your presence here, but the friendship of your nation. I'm proud to have this really remarkable Japanese American garden in Seattle, in the heart of our city, and really highlighting how important multi multiculturalism is and how enduring friendship can be. Thank you for allowing me to join you with this and over this 60 year period. And now I think I turn it over to the Consul General. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Dakan and Superintendent uh, Aguario and uh, Ms. Stone Sophia and uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ralph and distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I am delighted to join you for this very special Ginkgo Biloba's tree planting ceremony. The Ginkgo tree we plant today is one propagated from a tree that survived the atomic bombing at Hiroshima. I am most grateful to Seattle Japanese Garden of 60th anniversary, and especially Executive Director Jan Stone Cipher for making this possible. I also take this opportunity to thank the many staffs and volunteers of the Arboretum Foundation who helped tend to this wonderful garden and organized this beautiful event. Green Legacy Hiroshima is an initiative supported by United Nations Institute for Training and Research to spread worldwide the ginkgo spreads from Hiroshima's atomic bomb survival trees as well as a message of peace. I would also like to use this occasion to remember the many victims of the atomic bomb at Hiroshima, especially this year being the 75th anniversary. My deepest sympathies to those who are still suffering from the after effects of the atomic bombing, the devastation that occurred in Hiroshima and the suffering it caused should never be repeated. As the only country that experienced the destruction by the atomic bomb, it is Japan's unchanging mission to steadily move forward step by step with the efforts of the international community toward the realization of a world without nuclear weapons. In 2016, President Obama became the first sitting U.S. President to visit Hiroshima. This visit was an extremely important historic event in terms of memorializing the war victims and revitalizing international momentum for realizing a world free of nuclear weapons. At the same time, the visit symbolized the strength of the U.S.-Japan alliance and Alliance of Hope, which has been built up over 70, 75 years since the war. Japan and the U.S. are strong allies sharing fundamental values and strategic interests. The Japan-U.S. alliance plays a major role in maintaining the stability and the prosperity not only of the Asia-Pacific region, but also of the whole world as well. In addition, the alliance thrives on the strong friendship now ex exhibited between our two countries. Examples include the assistance given by our American friends in the aftermath of the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and in providing relief with the U.S. military's operation Tomodachi. Your outpouring of support deeply moved the Japanese people we will always remember it. Ladies and gentlemen, although new coronavirus infection has covered the world this year, we are we all struggling to overcome these challenges together. The friendship and support between Japan and the city of Seattle will only grow stronger and closer. 
I'm delighted that Mayor Dalpani is here for this celebration. The Japanese ginkgo billboard tree will be a lasting symbol of our special bond of for generations to come. I hope that people can come and enjoy this great symbolic tree the next time they visit the garden. Thank you very much. I'm Susan Ott Ralph, one of the docents of the Japanese garden. In 1945, the United States dropped an atom bomb on Hiroshima and later Nagasaki causing widespread destruction and loss of life. The trees burned and were blown over, and the devastated area was completely black. Despite this, some of the trees managed to survive and to encourage the people. A Japanese architect, who was in the second grade when the bomb dropped, said everyone was really moved to see the green leaves. As the city was rebuilt, the trees were treasured and given a special name. Habaku Jumoku, which means survivor tree. In 2011, Nazreen Azimi, a United Nations worker, and her friend Tomoko Watanabe organized Green Legacy Hiroshima, a volunteer campaign to, to disseminate the seeds from these trees to a network of international partners. Currently, there are trees in 36 countries around the world promoting a message of peace and hope. Nazarene said, I thought this should all come together and be told as a one narrative. It is too important a story. It cannot be forgotten. When I learned about Green Legacy Hiroshima, I loved the idea. I asked Jane Stonecipher if we could join as a partner and she was enthusiastic, and everybody connected to our garden came together for this project. We were hoping to have a sapling that we could plant for our 60th anniversary. However, the agricultural customs of the United States is very strict and it's just about impossible to import a sapling. But then Nazarene told us that she had brought some seeds from a ginkgo tree to San Diego about five years ago when she visited her mother, Azar Azimi. These seeds were from a tree located in a garden which was only 1,300 meters from the epicenter of the bomb. The garden had been created by a samurai tea master in the 17th century. The tree was over 200 years old when the bomb hit, burning the trunk. And after the blast, the wind rushing into the center caused the tree to tilt and nearly fall over but it survived. Azar has planted these seeds in a pot in her patio, and she agreed to donate the young sapling to our garden. So Kara Azumi and I went to San Diego and met Azar, who was sad to say goodbye to her tree. We promised her to take good care of it. She was planning to come to this ceremony, but couldn't because of the COVID. So then we drove the sapling to Seattle and delivered it to Ray Larson, the curator of the University of Washington collection, where he and his staff have cared for it for the last eight months, as it turned from a bear stick to this green sapling. Meanwhile, the volunteer docents of the garden have donated a plaque to set into the stone here. And I'll end with these words grown from a seed of a tree that survived the 1945 atomic bombs, a gift from Green Legacy Hiroshima to promote peace and hope. Uh, it's my privilege to read this message from Green Legacy Hiroshima. It makes all of us in the Green Legacy Hiroshima family very happy to think about the planting of a Hibaku Jumoku on the beautiful grounds of the Seattle Japanese Garden. It's particularly meaningful that you are doing so on such an auspicious occasion here, but also during such a momentous year, as much in the United States as around the world. This is in keeping with the beauty, but also the gravity of the message of the survivor trees, and even the birth of GLH itself, established in 2011, 
in the aftermath of the great East Japan earthquake, tsunami, and Fukushima nuclear accident. The message of the survivor trees of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so simple, and yet so profound and universal. They embody, by their mere presence, our collective hopes for a world without the threat of nuclear weapons and for celebrating the resilience and generosity of nature. We wish you a beautiful planting and thank all those who have made this possible. What a pleasure it is to be standing here surrounded by the beauty of this Japanese garden. Um, and I think as the mayor mentioned, there's a time when we need these the most. I'm so glad that our parks and open spaces here in Seattle are, are available for us to provide relief and respite during these stressful times. So we at the Department of Seattle Parks and Recreation are uh, honored to act as stewards of this historic garden. And the garden has served the city for over 60 years and has provided a place to find quiet, calm, and respite in an increasingly, increasingly urban environment, as you can tell by the traffic behind us. Um, also allowed folks to reflect on the history and the culture represented here. Seattle Parks and Recreation is also honored to host the Consul General, the Honorable General Inagaki. Welcome. Um, and I also want to echo the mayor and, and appreciate the partnership that it takes to run this garden. So Jane and Jessa and the entire staff of the, of the Arboretum Foundation, the board members as well, who work closely with countless of volunteers who, who lovingly take care of this garden. Uh, also all of our visitors. And I, I also want to thank our Parks and Recreation staff, the entire staff. I know we have uh, Tashika here who works in customer service. We have Belinda uh, and our head gardener, Peter, who uh, takes care of this, manages the garden with great dedication. So thank you all, and again, thank you so much, Jane, for having this great event. I think now we get to throw some dirt around. <laughs> 